Six years ago, we wrote The Millionaire Real Estate. In that book, we laid out four basic models for success. Mm -hmm. You've got the lead generation model, yep. the economic model, yes. the budget model, yes. and the fourth model is the organizational model. Let's talk about the organizational model. Okay. This is probably the toughest and trickiest one for the real estate sales industry to grasp, Jay. And the reason is because it's a whole nother discipline. That's right. We get to the fourth model, and that is I've done all that I can do personally. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm maxed out. I'm worn out. I'm stressed out, right? And I'm fixing to be laid out if I don't do something <laughs> about it. That's right. Okay, so I need to go hire someone. I've done all I could do, I need to go hire someone. See, you've stepped into a whole new world. You've left the world of sales and personal productivity and personal mm -hmm. production, and you're stepping into the world of succeeding through someone else. Mm -hmm. and that's a business concept. Leverage. Yeah, business, business is succeeding through others. Mm -hmm. that, that is the whole concept of business. And the first comment I always make to people is, how long did it take you to get really good at the personal productivity sales side of this? Wow. I mean, people were working their whole life to get there and then four or five years in the business to wow. master it. And... It wasn't a year. Mm -hmm. Might have been two, might have been three, might have been ten, but it wasn't one. No. Here's the basic premise that we make, and that is when you decide to succeed through someone else, we want you to go get trained. In our organization, we have classes, specific classes on this. Go take those classes. Please, immerse, go take classes in that, just like you took classes on how to list a house, how to work with a buyer, how to write a contract, how to do financing, how to handle a closing, how to handle inspect. You need to go take some classes on this. And it always amazes me mm -hmm. that a real estate says, I'm going to hire someone. Take no classes and then hire. And then they walk around and say, boy, I got a great one. And you're going, well, you're either lucky or delusional. That's right. So what happens is you've done all you can do and now you need help. Who do you hire first? Well, the first person we say is an administrator, right? Has the market changed that philosophy? Not at all. Okay. So we're going to hire an administrative person. We hire the right person. Mm -hmm. They not only can manage their paperwork, but they can hire additional people that they can oversee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the first hire. Who's next? Well, we keep hiring administrative until we're maxed out on all we can do from the in the, with the administrative being taken 100% off of us. And we're getting more and more focused on lead generation and yes. conversion yes. and doling out all the paperwork. Well, I'm right. still taking the leads. I'm still handling all that. Okay, now I, now I go and the second person I hire is a... Showing assistant. That's what I would advocate, is a mm -hmm. showing assistant. And then we, we work our way from showing assistant to them becoming a buyer specialist. That's right. Okay, then who would be the third person? Well, we can go all the way through the seven levels. Well, so the three big hires, the other third would be a listing specialist. Well, I think that we don't have to go through the seven levels. When we wrote the seven levels, mm -hmm. what we, we were actually observing mm -hmm. the, 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 the path of from organizational path from one person mm -hmm. where you did it all to how many levels it would take before you did none of it. Right. And we identified that as seven levels. Mm -hmm. The truth is, is that very few business people ever decide to be, quote, a seventh level person in, in their job business. What Why? does that mean? What does that mean? Just really quickly. Okay. Seventh level means? I don't do anything. That, That's right. that the business, stepped I've stepped owner. out as an owner and the business runs without me and I'm somewhere else doing something else. And chances are one of those three is now running the business. Now we said wherever your money is, be there. So even if it's a seventh level and you're out, it doesn't mean that you're not the one person who's running it isn't reporting to you on a weekly basis and you're not looking at the financials like a hawk trying to understand exactly what's going on. And if things are not what they should be, you're right back in their meeting. Dive back in. Well, at whatever level you need to, to make sure that those numbers are hit. And when I, I hear seventh level, it's not about escape and going to a beach somewhere. Mm, it's about so. having a business that's an asset that if you wanted to, you could sell. Yeah, and you could get to fourth, fifth, or sixth levels. That would be very freeing, Jay. They would be, you would have a lot more flexible time. What happens for me, uh, being somewhere in that probably sixth level, it allows me to pick where I insert myself. Mm -hmm. Seventh would say I'm not inserted at all. Mm -hmm. Sixth would say I get to pick. My observation has been for real estate agents that somewhere between four and six, is where the most successful agents and the happiest agents are. And they don't want to be totally disengaged. Has the, the market changed any of this? Has, has the shift in the market changed anything about the, the, the nature of hiring, uh, who you would hire first, second, or third, what you would give up, or anything about the seven levels and how that works? The only thing I can think that's changed is that it highlights how important it is to do a good job, yeah. right? You want to make sure you're hiring right and getting great talent because you're spending money. Cause 
Well, a, and here, here's experience. the interesting thing though. Someone could read the book and say, okay, I've hired someone. So I thus am going to get the same exact results because I hired someone good that you're going to get because you hired someone good. Is that true? Well, every individual is unique. Well, that individual and me. That's right. So you may be better at getting more from an individual just because of your nature of who you hire and how you communicate or relate to them versus me. But hopefully if you're building it on best practices and you're trying to follow the models, you will be increasing your ceilings of achievement. Isn't well, that sure. the point? What we understand is this, that this is about you being the best that you can be at these things. And at wherever level you are, that's where you are at that moment. Celebrate that and then ask the question, what's the one thing I could do to improve and do that thing and move on?